Welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. Please, uh, if you enjoy our videos, uh, please subscribe, please share, please like and comment down below if you have anything else you want to add, if you want to talk about any topics from the games uh, that happened this weekend. Yeah, so let's get breaking down the, uh, some of the games from this weekend. So first, SA New Zealand. What a game. Probably one of the best games I've ever been to in my entire life. Um, yes, sad ending, but that's, that's sport. Uh, if you, you can't be a true supporter if you got, can't go through the highs and the lows. But I think there's a ton of positives for both teams to take out of it. And it just shows the quality of world rugby at the moment. If there wasn't a beautiful advert for the World Cup next year, that was it. I mean, I would just play that game as the ad for the World Cup next year. What a two giants showing exactly what they're made of. The rivalry strong as hell. I haven't seen the All Blacks jump and it for joy for victory like that in a long time. And it makes me proud as a South African and a Springbok supporter to see them work so hard for those wins. Because as much as we, uh, they, they are a powerful rugby team and a rugby-loving nation, I think that it shows, it's good to show that there are teams that can compete and it just both teams elevate the game of rugby. So that's what you want to see from it. You want to see how the two players can really elevate it, bring everything and leave everything on the field. There was a lot of respect between both teams. The opening get, the opening haka really showed it and that is, it was just mouth-watering. So what a game. Thank you to everybody involved. Thanks for both teams who really just showed us why we are supporters and why we do this. So yeah, that's my, I was hoping that, wow. So yeah, New Zealand, well done. You showed why you're the world's best. You know how to close a game. The last 10 minutes is when you play rugby at your best. I mean, I think if you watch the last 10 minutes of every All Blacks game, you probably see some of the world's best rugby. So it's it's an amazing thing to see. It's something to aspire to and something that the, bo the, the box can learn from. The, the box really showed from Wellington to now that it's not it's not only about stats, but they can dominate the stats. The box, most of the game, the box were owning the stats. They had the ball, they had the position, they had the penalties on their side. They had a really beautifully rounded game that makes me proud to be a box supporter. Every player put everything on the line. I feel our defense was slightly weaker than previous games, but that unfortunately comes down to the All Blacks just wanting it more. So um, I think it's it's there's a ton of positives from both teams taken there, and really a great test for the uh, for us to now see what happens in the World Cup. Um, I think the box gave away some soft tries, where uh, with especially the first try for the All Blacks, that was an easy one, and it just shows, unfortunately, a, a tiny lapse of judgment is exactly what the All Blacks pounce on, and it's something that, weirdly really enough, the box did in Wellington, where it didn't matter about having the ball, it mattered about when you have the ball, you score, so credit to them, they really brought again what they're famously for, and even the or Crusaders do something similar, they really know how to make sure that it doesn't matter if they don't have the ball, they can score the tries, so I feel it was a little bit of a mistake from the South Africans to almost give them the opportunity, give, swap the strategy from Wellington that worked, but unfortunately, it's how it was. If you, I mean, few teams would be uh, would be disappointed with having a 30-13 a lead, 10 minutes to go, they think the game would be the bag, but there's, there's one team in the world which you could have a 40-point lead, 10 minutes to go, and they could still take the game. So the All Blacks showed that, and well done. Uh, in my opinion, what, some mistakes in judgment were made, I feel, I don't know who made them, but for example, the kick for penalty, for the second penalty for South Africa was, I think, a wasted opportunity. You already have two warnings on the All Blacks, you're on the five meter line, do not punish them properly, do not kick for goal in that situation. I know three points is three points and it's essential, but the fact of the matter is that we lost by two points. If we had went for a try, that's five, not three, we would have drawn at least maybe even score. So I'm not saying that we would have scored a try, but we had had some, we have been doing some beautiful running rugby. You're in the five meter line. Even a uh, the opportunity, another opportunity, a yellow card could have come from it. They were on a warning already. So I don't know if that was the right decision. I know it's test match rugby, but remember when you kick the ball over, you're in your own half. You never want to be in your own half against the All Blacks. They will punish you. They kicked back two, uh, a couple minutes later, they kicked those points back and you still haven't got it. Even if you're just trying to run down the clock, that would have been a perfect opportunity to do that. There's no better place than in their five meter line to run down the clock. So I question that decision heavily. I would think it was unnecessary. So that's probably, probably where I feel the biggest mistake in the game happened. I do feel that it was a little bit of a mistake from the coaching staff to bring, do some wholesale changes, especially since it was working so well in the last 10 minutes. But at the same time, that's a heavily uh, tough decision Rusty has to make because remember, you're playing the best team in the world who have, who have all done their substitutions and all of that have got world-class subs. 
and you've got to keep those last 10 minutes. And the problem is you've got to play for 80. So I do think that, unfortunately, that was a forced decision. It had to happen because of the fact that they um, that that's it needed to happen to make sure that we could actually maintain the game. I don't think the players could sustain that the, that level of play for much longer, but it was very sad. I was really good to see Marks and Elizabeth really control the breakdown. They really made sure we kept the position well. Marks and Elizabeth both had stunning games. Marks even more so. Mark, well, Malcolm Marks probably one of his best games this year, and that's saying something for Malcolm Marks. But what a performance! On the All Black side, I was quite surprised. Sunny Bill Williams didn't really perform. Um, I was expecting him to be more of a dominant force, but Ben Smith had some good runs in the back, and Ricky Oni and what a soccer holder was terrorizing on the wings, so that was good to see. Bowden Barrett back to kicking performance, he really had a stunning game on that hand. Also, Pollard showed that he is starting to become the fly off for the World Cup. Beautiful uh, 250 plus uh, place kicks at an angle, beautiful kick, so he's growing from strength to strength, and he also had some stunning runs. I would question, though, I do think, even though Dianti and, what am I saying, um, De Allender and Jesse Peel scored tries, they, you could see the difference, if you was watching game tapes, I was reviewing other games, that when they play in centre pairing, the ball rarely makes it to the wings, if you compare it to other games. I do not know why, but Lucania arm is better at distributing the ball to the wing. Jesse Creel, he's got a strong run, a stunning run, and he really had some good, uh, powerful impact and good defense, and so did the Islander. But when it came to trying to make sure we got the ball to the wing, especially when you have such talented players like Colby and Deontay on the wings, you've got to question if you're, if, if, to, to, especially they had a lot of space, and there was a couple of opportunities missed from not popping the ball in those situations. So I do question that. Sia Khaleesi, what a game. Uh, that try for, for that pop to um, the Islander was inspired by Sonny Bill Williams. Sonny Bill Williams looked at that and he was like, damn! So I think that was just impressive. Uh, I'm, uh, he continues to run strong. I do sometimes question his decision making as a captain, but he is a beautifully strong player. And when he runs, the t other team is afraid. So well done to him. I appreciate his play. I do want to question, as I said, the center pairing. I don't know if they work well together. They both seem to almost become stingier when they're on. When they, when the, one or the other, it seems to work well, but Jesse Creel needs to learn how to pass or he needs to go to win because it worked much better in the All Blacks game. So I question that, but we'll see how it goes forward. I think it's something Russie needs to look at. Um, I do think that it's, yeah, but that's, I think that's my main focus on that. I think of the All Blacks really just showed why they are the world number one. Well done to them. Really good performance. But the Springboks also showed that they are contender for, the, for that World Cup. So there's no bad things to take from that game. This is a sport where you win or lose in fine margins. Any, it depends on how the cookie crumbles. But I think no South Box supporter can be disappointed in that performance. We showed we are here to come. And we have 11 months to the World Cup. That's where the money, that's what the money is for. That's what we're pushing for. So let's see how it goes for. And we can just grow from here. So congrats to both teams. What a game. Let's move on to the Argentina-Australia game, which I was actually, I'm sad to say this, I wasn't really super excited for. It was a good, I'm not, I knew it was going to be a good game, but both teams, felt, I felt last week, weren't at their best. And something crazy happened, but they decided to play it in two halves. Argentina were a dominant force in the first half, really cutting, pouncing on any mistake possible. What a cutting try in the, in the first try there, an amazing try. Beautifully, beautiful counter-attack in the second try. The Argentina really show that they are dangerous from any point in the field and almost have an all-black style play to them. Their back three and even their back, their whole back line uh, are dangerous anywhere from the field. So, wow, and I think that they've got leaps and bounds to grow for the World Cup. They're showing talent for days. But one question, one thing that was really brought to light and that's something that they did work on is their depth. Now that they've got the players and the quality that they that is just growing and the style of play is working for them, their depth is questioned. You could see the, the game change when Sanchez went off. It took a few minutes for Australia to come back, but the momentum swung heavily when Sanchez went off, and that's very disappointing for Argentina. I think that that would have had the game in the bag if he could play the rest of the season, and he has had a stunning season. But Sanchez going off really halted the, their ability to maneuver and have those stunning plays. So um, I do think that Argentina need to look at having a backup or somehow bubble wrapping Sanchez because that was probably the turning point, in my opinion, for the game. Australia, credit to them. They never gave up. And once they saw the momentum swing, they pounced on it. 
They really had uh, Falau. They showed that, as I was saying last week, they have probably one of the best teams in the world individually. And oh, that second half, they showed the danger they are. I mean, to come back from that kind of deficit at half time is incredible. So I think that there's a lot of credit to be put to the coaching staff, to the players, to really show the quality that they can bring. And when they get together and when the momentum swings the way that they can finish out a game. So it's sad for Argentina. I really feel for them. They played amazing in that first half. But the second half, they led through soft tries and they slowly, their confidence waned. And that's something that Argentina look at. Once they start to get under pressure, pushed hard, they seem to almost let off the pedal. And that's some, they need to look at that when it comes to uh, mental and uh, physical, uh, men, mental thought in the game and make sure that, that no matter what happens, you've got to put there the 80 minutes. So that's something both teams can learn a lot from it. Australia need to really be afraid of the fact that their backline was torn to shreds by Argentina. One uh, positive for Argentina is also their scrums were substantially better than they were against New Zealand the week before. And I think that their forward pack is starting to grow leaps and bounds also. Something that is odd to say about Argentina, considering that they've been a dominant force in the forward pack for a long time. But this season, their backline has outshone them for days. And despite that less than great um, forward pack, the, 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 the back line has really been able to do some amazing moves. And I think if they can build their back, uh, their forward pack up more and actually ensure the stable feed of the ball, they're going to be a scary force. But all that these last weeks get this, this weekend's games proved to me is that the Southern powers are ready for the World Cup. There is nothing that waters, uh, makes my mouth more to more than seeing them now play in the outbound tour, where we, we're going to face some of the Northern powers and really see where this World Cup is going. Um, there, <coughs> as a rugby supporter, <coughs> there's nothing better. So I think that's, that's going to be really where it all comes down to. It, but it just shows you the amount of talent and quality rugby we, look at, we can see in our future. Yeah, and the coach, Michael Chica, uh, Chica really needs to <laughs> congratulate his guys for keeping him. I think his head was on a chopping block a little bit the last few weeks. So hopefully it can let off some pressure. It's a nice way to end the season. Uh, Ledesma has nothing to be ashamed of. He has turned Argentina into a force. So overall... Just positives. Every team just needs to go back and look at these games and be the small little things, but it's tiny things that they need to look at. But all overall, the fans won this weekend. The fans won as it was just good rugby all around. So yeah, thanks guys for enjoy, uh, watching my final game of the rugby championship. We'll review. I'll be bringing out other videos covering some of the top fourteen, uh, talking about previews for the, the the inbound tour, discussing some things. But yeah, I think we'll see me when we go to um, England again in the outbound tour next on previews. But yeah, thanks guys. Enjoy your week and please subscribe, please share. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.